finding activities for students to do at the very beginning of the year that help bring out their personality, help to inform you a little bit more about them, but also that help to make the classroom feel more like theirs can be a little bit challenging because a lot of the resources and activities that we see just feel like a worksheet at the end of the day that students are going to end up throwing away. So how can we find activities that are meaningful, exciting, and also tell you a little bit more about them? In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you four different picture books and activities that go along with them that are perfect for the beginning of the school year. At the beginning of the year, I love to read picture books at any age, whether it's kindergarten to fourth grade to all the way to sixth grade, because picture books and telling stories is what brings kids and communities together. Stories play such a huge role in how we connect with one another. And so I have four different picture books that I'm going to share with you that go along with some activities that are perfect for the beginning of the year, because it's going to help to inform you a little bit about them. It's going to help build that safe and welcoming environment for students. And it's also going to help to relieve a little bit of those worries that come along with the beginning of the school year. So let's go ahead and get started with the very first picture book. So the first book that I have for you is called One Word for Kids. And this is a brand new text for me. I have never used this one inside of my classroom. And I was introduced to it by a teacher on Instagram. And so I loved the idea of this book and I needed to have it because at the very beginning of a year, meaning not a school year, but like a calendar year. So in January, I will often have kids think of a word that they want to choose that help to represent them for the rest of the year. Now, I love this idea for the beginning of the school year as well. So even if you don't do this at the beginning of the year, you can do it on a calendar year. Um, either way, it's a really great way for kids to start thinking about goal setting. It's a great way for them to identify a word that they really really want to hone in on and focus on building and growing in. So I'm going to show you what this text looks like. So here is the book. It's One Word for Kids, a great way to have your best year ever. And it's by John Gordon, Dan Britton, and Jimmy Page. And inside of the book, I'm just going to show you some of the images itself. Um, it's about the first day of school and how this one character is feeling tired and grumpy and sad that the beginning of this or that the summer is over. Um, and then they start to talk about one word that's going to help them have their very best year ever. And so the students have to think about what their one word is going to be. So we have things like annoying, which that's very negative when we don't want to use those types of words. He thinks about words like fun, kind, love, and it takes them through all of the different words. At the very end of this text, you can see um, that you have a spot for them to be able to add their one word um, and lots of areas to be able to add words within that book. But um, it's just a very sweet text overall and one that I think that you would really enjoy doing with your kids. So this would be the book that you are reading with students. Now, let me show you the activity that I have with it. Now, this activity is not one that is my idea. Well, the keychain part is, but um, the teacher that I found teaching with a mountain view, I believe is who was the one who introduced me to this text um, online. So thank you so much. But she um, recommended doing bracelets, which you could absolutely do bracelets and have your students wear bracelets. However, I know that like my son is not a bracelet wearer. He does not like to have bracelets on. And so I would not have them do this one. So I thought about making making them into keychains because kids like to put things on their backpacks, or at least mine likes to put things on their backpacks. And so I chose the word grow. You can see that here's the word grow. I added some beads and then I also added my 
my initials, mainly because the string that I was using um, was too thin to work with this type of a bead. But all I did was buy some key rings, I added it to that, so then it could be added to a backpack um, and then worn all year round as far as represented it for themselves and for them to just have a reminder of what their word is. The other thing that you can do with it, and this is a product that I created, it's inside of the Bridging Literacy community. I promise it's not one that's gonna be too, um, too much for you to create on your own if you wanted to, but if you are in the community, you have access to this right now is gonna be a one word activity. And so I give directions on how to create uh, bubble letters and then I give the examples here that go along with it. And then students would just write their one word in their bubble letters here. So here's the example of what mine looks like. So I wanted to do the word grow and then I had the reasons why I wanted that word um, grow to be a representation of what I wanted to do to have the best year ever. Um, and then I wrote my because. Now what I like about this is then you can laminate this. You can even put it on construction paper to add like a little trim background to it. Um, but you can laminate it and put it up in the classroom all year long. So not only do they have their word uh, to represent for them for to keep with them all year long, even personally outside of the classroom, but then they have a representation of their word um, as a reminder when they are in the classroom. And for students who are really struggling with finding their words, here is a list of different word ideas that comes with this resource. That way you can just kind of help guide students on what might be the best word for them this year. So really cute, simple, fun activity. And I like the idea of giving students something to be able to take away. Um, especially on that first day of school. The next book and activity that I have for you is one that I absolutely love. This was a newer text for me, but the activity itself is something that I have done over the course of many years. So the book is called The Remember Balloons. And in this book, uh, Grandpa has so many balloons that he holds on to, and each one represents a very special story that was important to him. And so the young grandson also has balloons and they share some of these balloons and the colors that they represent for the stories that they have. But grandpa is losing his memory, so the little boy is trying to share as many of those stories to help grandpa remember them and to keep his balloons. So the book itself is very, very sweet. It's a great way to be able to help your kids uh, share their own personal stories, things that are very special for them individually, um, and then also uh, be able to represent them and put them up inside of the classroom to make it more theirs. I like these types of activities because when kids get stuck, when it comes to any form of independent writing, they can always look to... <clears throat> They can always look to either the images that they have up in the room or they can look to their remember balloons to help them think about some stories that are really special to them that they would like to be able to write about. So I'm going to show you the uh, book a little bit more in detail and then also the activity that goes along with it. So let's take a look at this book a little bit more closely so that you can see what's on inside. So the remember balloons and it's written by Jesse. Alaveros. Alaveros, I believe is how it's pronounced. So the inside of the book reads, James has lots of balloons. They're where he keeps his memories. Grandpa has lots of balloons, birthdays and long ago summers, weddings and special camping trips. Grandpa's balloons hold so many great stories. James loves to hear them. But when grandpa's balloons start drifting away, James wants to catch them all. He can't. James now has to be the one to share stories to share his balloons with grandpa. So you can see the text in the drawings are very simple. I love the colors of the balloons and what this represents as far as the black and white of the images. Um, There's so many pieces about the craft that you can see here. So each of the balloons has a certain color to represent all of the different memories that grandpa has held over the years. So it's a very, very sweet story. Um, one that is wonderful to be able to tell. And so I wanted to share an activity that would be great to go along with it. Now, no judgment here because I know that this is not 
technically a balloon, but it's something that I have done over the course of the year, and I love to keep these up all year long. So what I did is I created almost a 3D effect of a hot air balloon. Now, I chose to do a hot air balloon because in the past, we would set goals on these as well. So you could either have students be able to set goals or to write down the memories that they have. So um, what I did is I took this template. I have one that has no lines and then one that does have lines. Again, this is something that's in the community, but you can find clip art like this and I just made it into an entire page um, in Google Slides and then I was able to print them out. So I printed them out on cardstock and I printed out three of them. So I have two lined versions and then one version that is um, with no lines at all. And so you could have kids write their own stories here, um, or in the past we've written some of the goals that we might have um, as a as a classroom or as individuals and students would write their goals here. So to create this like 3D effect, all you have to do is fold each of the balloons in half and then you're going to glue the halves together until they all kind of make up um, this like triangular effect of this balloon. You could have kids color it. Um, I then punched a hole through this very top part of it and then you can attach a string and have it dangling inside of the classroom or even in the hallway. So while it might not be an actual balloon, I think the hot air balloon is really cute. They can even add some of the individuals from each of their stories here or just have them illustrate the entire thing on one side. So there's a lot of ways that you can be able to customize it. But yet again, it's such a beautiful project that you can keep up that allows kids to be able to share their own stories and then also make the classroom um, look really beautiful with the decorations themselves. I love being able to see these decorated up inside of the classroom and having them hang all over the, um, the room just to make it look really beautiful and to keep those really um, memorable decorations up for quite some time. Now, of course, you don't have to keep it up all year long, but these are just some of the most beautiful things um, to me when it comes to decorating a classroom and to making that space not only feel like your space, but also their space as um, the students who are going to be occupying that for the year. So again, this is a template that's up inside of the community. So you can go and grab this and use it um, for either memories or for sharing some of the goals that students might have all year long. Now, as a previous fourth grade teacher, I recognize that fourth graders tend to be a little bit of worry warts. <laughs> um, the anxiety of the beginning of the school year, especially if you are a teacher that is the beginning grade at that school, as in kids are transitioning from one school to another, students have a lot of anxiety, whether it be about just knowing their routines, trying to get used to this whole new space, like growing up, there's a lot of different uh, worries that come about this time of the year. And so I have another book and this one is a little bit more uh, like kiddish type book. It's not as upper elementary, but it's a text that I really love to share with students, especially if they're feeling as though that they are worried about something um, and they don't want to share their worries with others because of the vulnerability that it brings. So the book is called Silly Billy and it's by Anthony Brown. And you can see it's very, very colorful. What's really neat is that this story stems from from a tradition. It's a Gua Guatemalan tradition, Tradition, if, I, if I'm right. Um, we'll check on that in just a second. But students can uh, hear about the worries that this one kiddo has in this story um, and then also feel comforted that they are not the only ones that are worried to some extent. So let's take a look at what's inside of this book and then also the activity that goes along with it. All right, so again, the book is called Silly Billy, and on the inside, um, we're gonna take a look at some, oh, I love the vibrant colors that are all throughout this entire text. 
So here you can see that Billy is a bit of a warrior, is how they start it. So you can kind of get to know the character. Um, and it talks about some of the things that he worries about. So he worries about hats, which while this might seem very weird, I actually did have a student who worried quite a bit about hats and wearing other people's hats because of lice. So there's always a reason. Um, worried about shoes and clouds rain, giant birds. Um, and then of course, mom and dad try to comfort and say, listen, don't worry. Like I'm never gonna let anything happen to you. Um, but he just continued to worry until when grandmother comes to stay and she explains the worry dolls that she had. And so she tells him that basically what he what he can do is he can tell his worries to the worry dolls and then he puts them under his bed at night and he can sleep nice and um, sound. And he does. He does sleep nice and sound. But at some point he starts to worry about the worry dolls. So he makes them their own worry dolls as well so that everybody can sleep nice. And he continues making them. So don't think that the dolls that are worrying for the worry dolls don't get their own worry dolls because they do. But here at the very bottom is where you learn a little bit more about this tradition and it says worry dolls come from Central America country of Guatemala. They are made from tiny pieces of wood and scraps of cloth and thread. Long ago, the children of Guat Guatemala made these dolls and then they went to bed at night and they would tell a worry to each one before placing them under their pillows and going to sleep. In this way, they would wake up in the morning feeling much less troubled. To this day, children in Guatemala trust their dolls to take away their worries as they sleep. And this custom has now spread around the world. So what I did is I had my students create their own worry dolls. Now, mine were not as small. Um, they were pretty big, but you can kind of see here. All I did is I gave them a large popsicle stick. So one of the, not the average sizes, but the ones bigger than that. And and then I took a really tiny one and made those into arms. And then I just wrapped them up with yarn. Now you can have them um, add way more different colors. Unfortunately, I really lacked in my colors as far as the yarn that I had, um, but students could create all sorts of colors and patterns when it comes to um, how they wanna decorate their own worry dolls. And they can keep these in their desk or they can take these home, um, but is their way of taking a little bit of that tradition and trying to make it their own. So they, um, this one I just added a hat rather than giving it hair, but students can just be really creative as far as how they wanna create their own worry dolls. But it's a nice little text and also activity so that you know um, and help to kind of ease some of the stressors that come with the beginning of the school year. The final book that I have for you is one called Windows. And this is a really sweet story and one that's also very brand new to me. But what I love about this book is that it brings to light all of the uniqueness that we have, especially when we go home at the end of the day, that everybody's lives are a little bit different. Um, and it really pulls into that. So this text um, by Julia Denos, I believe is how it might be pronounced, um, just talks about this boy's walk uh, in the middle of the night as well, not in the middle of the night, but as it starts to get darker and how it's filled up the entire walk with these this yellow light that's coming through these windows. And so they share a little bit about what's happening inside of those windows and what you can see in as he's going on this walk with his dog. Um, and then there's this sweet little craft that you can do with this as well to make your room a little bit more inviting and kind of share a little bit more about student lives outside of school. So I'm gonna take you through the book a little bit more so you can see the inside of it. So you can see here's the town, it's starting to get dark outside um, and it's all about what we see inside of the windows. So see the little boy getting ready to take the dog on a walk and then inside you can see everyone's windows um, and what's happening on the inside. So they talk about something that you can kind of see and what, what's happening on the outside um, and the yellow light. They often talk about the yellow light that's coming through 
So you can see people are having a party. Some people have their curtains drawn. Some lights are completely turned out. These friends are having a conversation back and forth. But what I love is just the differences in the windows as they start to share. My favorite is this one, this fan here. I love, love, love that. Um, and so you can kind of go through, have conversations. There's not a ton of text, but there's a lot to have conversations about when it comes to what's happening um, in those images. And then I love this one here because what can be something a little creepy, um, they leave it really beautiful. So others are empty and leave you to fill them up with stories. Um, and then, of course, you have dogs, you have people waving as they arrive back home again. So everybody's windows are a little bit different, um, sharing that uniqueness of each individual person. And so I thought of a craft that can go along with this that would also be really great to have inside of your classroom all year. So um, I don't have it all together because I wanted to show you a little bit about how to put this together. But what you would do is have students create something, a memory, something that makes them very unique um, and draw that out. And so for myself, I drew out my kitchen table because one of the, the sweetest memories that I have or some of my favorite times are being around this kitchen table with my family, eating dinner, and then we will often play some type of a game. And so you can kind of see um, that we also colored it in yellow around it just to kind of add to the book about the yellow of the, the light that's happening inside of the house. So what you would do is then have students cut out pieces to start to build and create their window. Now I would encourage you to do these all just a little bit different um, just so that everybody's windows look and feel different at the end of the day. So here you can see I added a curve not to say that that's what my window looks like because it does not. Um, you would cut off all this excess afterwards. Um, but then we could add some of the bottom here to kind of add this like thicker piece of this window and then adding in some of the trim pieces here. So as you can kind of see it all coming together, but here's kind of the added piece that you could do. So you can either have kids make shutters um, to add into their windows, or you can have them make curtains out of tissue paper. So I just took a piece of tissue paper and I did it accordion style. And then once it was accordion, I just created a little hole punch. And then afterwards, you can have them take a string. And with this string, they will once they have everything glued as well. That's all, that also would be helpful. But then what you would be able to do is add the string to the picture frame or to the window itself so that it would create this little effect of a window um, that we're looking into to see the kitchen table. So you can kind of see it all come together. I wanna see what this looks like. So let's go ahead and really quickly, we're gonna just glue these pieces together so we can kind of get that final look of it all. So for this final piece, what you would want to do is you can take the string and just tape it onto the back, if that is easiest. Um, I would also recommend to add a little piece of string perhaps in the middle, or sorry, a little piece of tape in that center piece, just to kind of keep it all together but now you can kind of see that we have a window and then let's cut this to fit here so there is the window that you can put up inside of the classroom um, and to show a little bit more about students lives 
um, at home and just some of their favorite memories to kind of make it their own. So you can have a room filled with all these windows that help to represent the students that you have inside of your classroom. So there you have it. Here is this final one, this version here of a window that you can see. Obviously you would wanna put curtains on either side, um, but I hope that you all enjoyed these um, just really sweet books and also activities that you can do at the beginning of the year. Let me know if there is one that you are really excited about incorporating into your own classroom this year, or if there is another text and activity that you like to incorporate for the beginning of the year to help build community and just awareness of the differences that students bring to the table and to their classroom. Um, I would love to be able to hear those. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure to give it a like, subscribe if you have not already, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I upload a brand new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!